All right, this is a continuation from a previous video. So I want to point out I made one mistake. This should actually be a positive 1.5 newtons, and I'll show why uh, later on. Well, I think it will become clear, but let's just finish up with this. So the six newtons applied a force of 1.5 newtons. So this beam felt a force of 1.5 newtons being applied to it, this part of the beam. This part of the beam felt a force of 4.5 newtons. 4.5 newtons. So if we so if we separated the beam, this part of the beam felt that greater force, and that's primarily because the force is just well that the reason is because the force is closer this way to this point. If the force was all the way over here, I mean almost all of the force would be applying to this point versus that point. So I kind of want to point that out. So what the shear is, and this is a really big thing, is the shear is is 1.5 newtons. 1.5 newtons. So anywhere in this beam there is a shear 1.5 newtons. This part is wanting to go up while this part is wanting to go down. So there's a shear force of 1.5 newtons here and the same shear force is right here. Right here 1.5 newtons. So throughout this part of the entire beam, this part of the beam, there's a shear force of 1.5 newtons. And on this part, no matter where you looked at it, there's the uh, there's a shear of a negative 4.5 newtons. So this part's wanting to go down, and this part's wanting to go up. So it has a negative 4.5 newton shear, and that's throughout the entire beam until it gets to that point. So this part of the entire beam has a negative 4.5 newton shear. So if we were to graph that, just graph the shear force versus the distance x, and we'll say this is 9 meters, 9 meters, and this was 1.5. Throughout the entire beam until 9 meters, we have a shear force of 1.5 newtons. And then at the point of the point of this force, it goes straight down, so it's discontinuous, it goes straight down to a negative 4.5 newtons. Now if we wanted to find, and we're going to move on to moment now, so if we wanted to find the moment at this point, pretending that this did not exist, the moment, so what moment would this have to generate, generate, what moment would this have to generate to prevent this force from making it rotate that way? And all it would be is the opposite of this moment. And this is counterclockwise, so it would be a positive. So what's the, the length it's this length times the force, so the length x times the force, which is the shear force, v, which is equal to equal to 9 meters times 1.5 newtons, and that is just equal to 13.5 newton meters, I think. Newton meters, so let's graph that real quick. So moment, the 9 meter mark right there, and we said it had a moment of 13.5 newton meters. So, so we know what the moment is at the 9 meter mark. What's the moment here? Well if we decrease this distance, we decrease this distance, or the lever arm length, it will basically go to zero, so it will go to zero. Now what we notice there by doing that is we notice that that's actually the area under this. So the area under this line will give you the moment. Now this is a negative area, so then the moment will actually start going down until we get to the 12 meter mark. The 12 meter mark. So we actually found where the greatest moment was within the beam, and that is right there. And if we wanted to find the moment maybe right here, we would just go all the way down and this would be the moment at that point. So I just really wanted to go through this really slow, but but I mean if you did take the area under that, that would be a negative 13.5 newtons. So if you took the area, or if you took the integral across this entire entire length, you'd get zero. So so that is how you find the moment in a membrane, or <laughs> the moment within a beam. Yeah. <laughs>